Hi, this is Michelle from Genuine Bloodshed, and this is the story of the abduction and murder of Alicia Sarah McPhail, born October 22nd, 2011. This story is graphic and unsettling, so discretion is advised. For copyright reasons, I do not have a photo of Alicia to share. However, I will add a link below to her Wikipedia page. This story takes place on the Isle of Bute in Scotland. When this story took place in 2018, Alicia was just six years old. Her mother, Georgina, was 23, and her father, Robert, was 26. They were no longer together. Alicia lived with her mother and visited her dad. She was on a visit with her dad at the time of her tragedy. Her father, Robert, lived with his parents and had a live-in girlfriend at the time named Tony, who was 17. Robert and Tony smoked pot and sometimes sold it. One person they sold it to lived only a five-minute walk away, and his name was Aaron Campbell. Aaron was 17 years old and lived in his mom's house. On July 1st, 2018, Aaron had several people over for a party where everyone was drinking. The party broke up around midnight. Aaron decided he wanted to get high and began sending texts to people in his phone asking if they could bring him some weed. No one replied. Aaron tried to contact Robert and Tony to ask them for some. Neither of them replied. Aaron then decided to go to their house and steal any weed that he could find. He took a large kitchen knife with him. As is common on the aisle, the door of the home was unlocked and Aaron was just able to walk inside. Everyone was asleep, including Alicia, whose bedroom was right by the front door. Aaron saw Alicia in her bed. Later, Aaron would tell authorities, All I thought about was killing her when I saw her. The 17-year-old boy then picked up sleeping Alicia and walked out of the house with her unnoticed. He made his way to the shoreline with her. Alicia woke up and asked Aaron who he was. He told her he was a friend of her dad's and that he was taking her home. Instead, he was taking her to a closed-down hotel, a 15-minute walk away. The grounds of the former hotel had wooded areas. Once there, Aaron raped Alicia so bad that the pathologist described her genitalia as being in catastrophic condition. In addition to this horror, Alicia endured 117 injuries. Most were caused while she was still alive. Aaron killed Alicia by applying forceful pressure to her neck and face. Aaron left her there, dead and naked. He then went home to shower. He would come back very shortly because he had left his phone at the scene. Alicia's grandfather woke up four hours after her abduction. He needed to go to work. He realized right away that she was out of bed and nowhere in the house. Alicia's grandmother then called the police. Alicia's grandfather also went on social media. He made a Facebook post asking for help from the community in finding Alicia. Sadly, seeing this post is how Alicia's mom found out her little girl was missing. Several people showed up to help the police look for Alicia right away, including a Coast Guard volunteer who found Aaron's knife by Alicia's house. Among the search volunteers was Aaron's mother. At 8.54, a man by the name of George Williams told the police he found Alicia's body. At almost the exact same moment, Alicia's dad was exchanging texts with Aaron. Robert asked Aaron to look out for Alicia, and Aaron's reply was, hmm, Damn, I'm sure she's not went too far. Aaron's mom checked her CCTV footage from her home security cameras to see if she could find any information to help the police with their investigation. That's when she saw her son leaving twice during the time of Alicia's disappearance. Aaron's mother turned the footage over to the police. Police viewed the footage and interviewed Aaron. Aaron showed no signs of upset. However, on July 4th, he was arrested for suspicion on Alicia's murder. He was interviewed again, but he replied, 
no comment to every question. Nine days later, Aaron was taken to court where he did not submit a plea. In December, he appeared in court again for an indictment proceeding. He pled not guilty to abduction, rape, and murder. His trial began in February of 2019. The jury was shown the CCTV footage from Aaron's mom and other footage taken from other homes showing a man carrying something. It was proven that Alicia was carried to her location by the condition of her feet. They were clean and without injuries. Aaron's mom confirmed to the courts that a jacket, a pair of joggers, a t-shirt, and a pair of boxing shorts found at the scene belonged to her son. She also confirmed the knife found was taken from her kitchen. Fibers from Aaron's clothes were found on Alicia's discarded pajamas. His DNA was found on Alicia's face, 14 parts of her body, and some of her clothing. A 16-year-old girl who was not named told the courts about a video Aaron made himself with the words, found the guy who has done it, and sent it to a group of 25 people on Snapchat. Aaron was questioned in court for two hours. He denied knowing Alicia, and when asked if he was responsible, Aaron said, Absolutely not. I can never do that. The jury deliberated for three long hours before giving a unanimous guilty verdict on the 21st of February. When he reappeared before the courts on March 21st for sentencing, it was revealed by Dr. Gary McPherson, a consultant forensic clinical psychiatrist and a social worker, who had talked with Aaron, that Aaron did confess to Alicia's murder. Aaron told Dr. McPherson that he was quite satisfied with the murder and said it took everything to stop laughing during points of the trial. The doctor's report also stated that Aaron continued to experience thoughts of killing and having sex with children. Aaron was given a life sentence with a minimum of 27 years. Aaron appealed this and won, however, he remains under the life sentence, but he now becomes eligible for parole after only 24 years. It is my hope that he doesn't make it that long. Thank you for listening to this story. Hi, I'm Michelle, and if you search for this crime, you'll find several articles on it. One thing confuses me, and maybe you can help me. It says that once Aaron killed Alicia, he took off all his clothes and threw them into the ocean. I'm assuming they washed back up on shore. I'm curious as to why it's not mentioned whether or not he was seen naked coming back to the house on the CCTV footage or whether he was wearing different clothes. I'm confused as to why it doesn't mention anything about that anywhere.